Uh, my name is Rob Kerry, and welcome to the first ever IE Marine Sites con Conference. As well as talking to you all today and comparing, I'll also be the first speaker for today, talking about the future of search. Uh, I'm one of the co-founders of IEMA. Uh, we're a search marketing agency which started back in uh, 2007. Uh, offering organic search, paid search, content marketing consultancy. Um, we used to uh, work in uh, uh, the largest online poker company uh, in the world, uh, getting them number one for poker, and we were thinking, if we can do it in poker, we should be able to do it for anything. So uh, we set up IEMA and ran it from our living rooms until we was ready to launch. And now IEMA is uh, about 100 people strong, uh, with six offices around the world, and uh, yeah, We've uh, organised this first conference to give you some insights into what, what's actually happening in the industry today. So, at the very beginning of the search marketing industry, I don't know how many people um, sort of started out back when it first started, but uh, <laughs> it used to be fun times. It used to be uh, enjoyable times where most of your time was spent down the pub, drinking beer and uh, talking to your fellow SEOs. Um, there weren't very many rules in SEO or PPC back then. Um, there were a few like sort of failures back in those years. There was the dot-com bust, but uh, mostly it was quite an easy ride for us all. So back in uh, 2001, this is what Google used to look like. And if you wanted to be number one for the term casinos, for instance, all you had to do was just make sure that Google could see the word casinos in your metadata and in your content. Make sure that people are linking into you using the term casinos, and basically whoever had the best links ended up winning. So it was pretty simple back then. So uh, it was very easy. And with uh, paid search as well, kind of simple days as well, you could easily see what were the actual paid adverts. They stand it out quite a lot with a different color background. Um, you got a good quality score as long as you had a half decent landing page and mentioned the terms like in your ad copy as well. And the rest of it was literally just a bid to see who can spend the most money. But those results changed quite a lot over the years. So this is the same result today. And if you have a look at this result versus what it was 15 years ago, you can see a lot has actually happened. The first thing which you'll probably notice or your parents might notice is uh, there's very little difference between the uh, paid search ads at the top and what the organic results used to look like 15 years ago. So Google has not only stripped it down to make it look like there's fewer adverts, but they've also made the adverts look like they're organic search results. What you also might notice is there isn't actually any clean organic link through to a third party website in the uh, first page of results. So this page has only got the four ads at the top and it's got uh, links through to um, basically Google Maps and Google local results, which then click through to another Google page. So they're all keeping the uh, information within themselves unless you pay to be at the top and get through that way. Here's another example of result, uh, flights to New York, just showing like how they're trying to change basically the way that they're getting ad revenue coming in. So in this example, they've got a comparison engine there for flights as well as the four results at the top. So it looks clean, first of all, and it looks like you've got some organic results at the top. But in actual fact, all of that is paid and all of that gives Google some revenue. So you might be wondering why they're doing that. Well, um, many years back, they decided to become a public limited company, float on the stock exchange. And now that they're, they've got shareholders to contend with, they have to find ways of making more and more revenue. And that's quite hard these days, especially with uh, people installing ad blockers, many of which uh, remove the uh, AdWords results from Google search results. So uh, here's quite an interesting part of the filing when Google first floated that they submitted to the uh, Securities Exchange in America. They said, uh, what their slogan means, don't be evil. We also display advertising, which we work hard to make relevant, and we label it clearly. This is similar to well-run newspaper, where the advertisements are clear and the articles are not influenced by the advertiser's payments. And you kind of wonder, does this really match what they're saying there? Just get my clicker to work. <laughs> so what is Google so afraid of? Well, in the old days, these used to be the competitors to Google. 
There was Lycos, Alta Vista, Yahoo, all of which had much more, much inferior uh, algorithms. They weren't able to filter out the spam so well. So uh, they weren't much competition for Google, and that's why Google has such a big market share today. And Ask Jeeves, I'm going to come back to later. Today, they've got issues with walled gardens, basically. So there's communities building up where Google can't get access to them or is not willing to call that data. For quite a while, um, they showed uh, data from Twitter, real-time Google search uh, data. Then they removed it all, thinking they'd be okay without Twitter. And then realized most people are now talking about their everyday lives on these platforms. So they're not giving a decent result to the user if they don't include data from these platforms. And platforms such as Facebook as well, very hard to uh, get data out of that without some sort of partnership. So people are publishing to these walled gardens, these communities, rather than publishing to web pages, meaning that Google doesn't actually get as much information and it isn't as all seen, all knowing as it once was. People are also using the internet differently. So people are using multiple devices and the mobile phone is now the primary device for people to use at home. And Google has very little influence, especially on uh, devices such as the iPhone, about what people use to try and search and find out information. They can't control whether they have Safari installed, whether they use uh, Bing, whether they use an app to find the data direct. Uh, so there's very little influence they have compared to a desktop where most people by default have Google as their uh, home page. People also uh, searching very differently. So it's becoming a lot more common for people to search and talk into their phone. So there's technologies such as Apple, Siri, uh, Microsoft Cortana, Google Now, all of which take someone's question, understands it, searches for it, and then brings back the information. Apart from Google Now, the other two uh, providers can use any source they want in order to fulfill these requests. So you can actually bypass Google completely, which is a massive threat to them. There's also a device uh, which you see on the screen here. Um, they not actually, it hasn't launched in the UK yet, but in the US they're becoming very, very popular. It's called the Amazon Echo. And what it basically does is you put it in your room and it listens out constantly about what you're talking about and you can ask it questions and it will immediately go over to the web, search for the information, bring it back and tell you what the information is. So again, this is another device in the home which doesn't use any other computer that can actually bypass Google, which is another huge threat to them. What this also does is make it more socially acceptable for people to talk into technical devices. If you think back when mobile phones first came out and people were using hands-free kits like this, you used to get people looking at you very strangely if you were using a hands-free kit. People think you're just talking to yourself walking down the street. But these days, if you're just talking to a device such as the Amazon Echo, you wouldn't really think too much about it. You'd think it's actually quite normal. So when it becomes socially acceptable, more and more of these devices will come out, and then suddenly you're going to get away from even having a desktop screen at all. So this is also changing how uh, searches change as well. So back when we used uh, search in 2001, you'd basically think quite a lot, long time before you actually type a search into Google. You'd ask, what would Google actually understand from what I'm looking for? So if you're thinking, uh, I really like some business web hosting within a certain budget, you wouldn't actually say that to Google. You'd just type in business web hosting. These days, people are getting more used to having very specific uh, search queries and even questions which funny enough goes back to uh, Ask Jeeves. Ask Jeeves was, in my opinion, a little bit too uh, early to the market. If they're still around today, their technology would be worth a lot of money. Obviously, they still have a platform out there, but it th isn't as big as it once was. So it's the ability to understand a question that someone has and then translate that into relevant search results. And that's where Google Brain comes in. It's Google Rank Brain. So uh, you might have heard of Rank Brain. It's basically technology, kind of artificial intelligence technology that Google has developed. And it allows them to um, customize the search results and manage people's queries a lot faster than they usually would be able to. And this comes in key for uh, voice-based searches and question-based searches. So Google now finds it a lot easier to answer these kind of questions and come up with relevant results. And a large part of this is um, having the answers to these questions on your web pages. 
So whereas people in the old days would be searching for something such as business web hosting, and all you'd have to have on your page is the term business web hosting, people are asking specific questions. So you need to have answers to these questions on your website. You can see uh, this already happening on a few uh, different e-commerce stores, what they're implementing. So for example, Amazon is really trying to push uh, users to uh, answer questions on their behalf to people that might potentially buy products that they've bought in the past. So because uh, Amazon already has these questions on their page, these are the kind of questions which people might be typing into search engines these days. So they'll be actually able to rank for these terms, terms which they might not already be able to rank for based on their product description and be number one in the search results for these. Oops. So uh, another big thing that's happening is more and more people are using apps rather than browsers. So on phones, on tablets, and it's gonna become uh, more of a part of desktops as well. Now that both Microsoft and Apple, their operating systems are having app stores. So people are gonna be moving away from the browser and trying to get information out of individual apps. So this is becoming more and more important as well. So you've got things such as app store optimization, which is a big topic, which we can talk about. And uh, it's now become more important to actually start ranking for the, uh, the sector terms, such as uh, making a web hosting app, and then being able to answer people's questions within your own apps as well. So this is gonna be an area which is gonna develop even more going forward. I suppose as an SEO, it always comes back to links really, which is what we started at in the very beginning, back in the old days. So links are still important. Links are still what Google uses. And even though there's been a few articles recently saying that maybe Google might stop using links, I don't think it's ever gonna happen. It's the best metric they've got of understanding which pages are more important than others. But what is changing is the way that those links influence the web page and the results. So the important thing going forward is to make sure that you build out these question and answer based pages, either put the content on your product pages or have separate Q and A pages on your website. And these are the pages that you need to be driving more links and more uh, buzz into, because these pages are gonna answer everyone's questions, are gonna uh, rank for the long tail searches, and then it's your job to then convert that traffic onto the product pages to become a sale. So if I was gonna say one thing to do going forward, is to start building out these Q&A uh, Q pages, Q&A content, and then drive links into those and not into your home page and your main category pages. Thank you very much.